guys, you know, as we look and try to figure out exactly, you know, where is the Lord and everything that we're involved in, <clears throat> I'm always looking for that. Always analyzing and trying to figure out, you know, what's it all about? What's he want to accomplish? You know, and there's some things that I think uh, are powerful for us to, to think in terms of is we, we analyze and we, we take a look at how are we aiming for, are we hitting a target uh, that's supposed to be part of what we're doing, right? And so that's one of the things I'm always trying to do is figure out <clears throat> are we accomplishing the very purpose that God called us to or are we not? You know, are we, are we moving in a direction that's uh, busy but maybe not accomplishing exactly what he wants to do? So that's what I've been doing is doing a lot of thinking about those kinds of things and you know, when you have an opportunity to have strangers around you, you know, and of course on the property with Car Carnival, that's a good time to do that, right? It's a good time to think in terms of, you know, uh, what's going on you know, with these people and what is our interest and how do we, how do we best um, impact them and what is, what's the purpose? Why do we do what we're doing? Let me tell you what it's not for. It's not for we have music that entertains us. It's not for that, right? It's not about a carnival that has a lot of fun that we can do things that we enjoy. It's not about that. It's not about other ministries or things we're involved in that have our interest. It's not about that. It's about, it's about some very, some fundamentals that are true on the front of this pulpit you see Matthew 22 37 it says you must love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and all your mind right it's about that for sure right and then <clears throat> another thing that really brings me to a place of you know thoughtfulness is Matthew 28 18 through 20 says then Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded to you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Right. So those are, those are fundamentals, and you hear me say that a lot, and of course you've heard Pastor Randy preach that way. You see a sign on the front of the pulpit that is a good indication that loving God with every fiber of our being is what we need to do, and it's a target. And so it, it helps to, to analyze and think about things. I had some juveniles around the property yesterday, late in the evening, the very last characters I had to deal with, very disrespectful, foul-mouthed youth. And I have to tell you, what I wasn't feeling for them was the love of Jesus. There's something very wrong with that. There's something very wrong with that because the whole reason we do what we do is in order that we can share that very love. Is that we would communicate that uh, in a way that would warrant, you know, loving God with every fiber of our being and understanding that we're supposed to not only, not only win them to Jesus, you know, the catchphrases you hear in the church all the time, you know, I want, you know, Jesus, I, they ask Jesus into their heart or, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're new in the family of God. They're, they ask, they pray to prayer. No, that's wonderful. But that's not what we're commanded to do. We're commanded to make disciples. And we're commanded to teach them the things that we've learned. Right? So if we miss our target on some of those things, it's time to analyze and make some adjustments. Don't you think? I think so. I think so. Because I, I feel as if, if we are at a place in time that we lose sight of those things, um, we got to take another look. I realize a lot of the things in ministry, a lot of the things that I work at and, and strive for, um, man, it, it's contingent on this, on this real human attitude that wells up in us, right? And, and it's really lived out uh, and, and accomplished by that reality of Jesus made it possible, if we try to do it within our flesh, you're going to fail. You, and, and sometimes, you know, in, in the effort to do things 
that you believe will head you in that direction, you fumble the ball. We, we try to grab a ball and run down the field in the flesh to make a play that's supposed to be spiritual. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So we, we try to do a lot of things, and I think legitimately uh, we lose sight of the goal, we lose sight of the target, we lose sight of what God wants to accomplish in and through our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 and 24 says this, I have the right to do anything, you say, but everything is be- not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. When you think in terms of, of, of making this plan that we push forward an agenda or I'm involved in things or so on and so forth, and we rely on the fact that God's love, his forgiveness for us, his grace and mercy gives us a, a measure of freedom, right? Right? We know that the scripture says that if we confess our sin, he's faithful to, to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so when you think in terms of this concept of I have the right to do anything, but not everything is beneficial to the cause of Christ, right? <clears throat> so thinking in terms of that mindset and in taking a look at the scripture, when you realize the tendencies of the human heart, the the frailty of the human heart, the, you know, running a play that's in the flesh and in a spiritual game. Those kinds of things lead us to a place like this. So I find, it's Romans 7, chapter 7, verse 21 through 25 says this, so I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What what a wretched man am I. Who will rescue me from this body subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. So listen to this. Listen as we go into chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and following says, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How about that? This crazy, you know, gymnastics that we're trying to sort our way through. He says, after the fact, you know, I want to do good and and, and I, I get tangled up in this mess at times. I run the wrong play out of good intention, maybe. Maybe I just fumbled the ball because I just didn't pay any attention and and I just fumbled it. He says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, to be a sin offering. And he, he <clears throat> condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled, might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on the, what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, and the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God and and does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those are in the realm realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. 
Well, that's a whole mouthful to simply say there's a battle raging inside of us. There's a battle raging inside of us, you know, and it's an amazing thing because I was really thinking about this tug of war that was going on inside of me because I had these juveniles on the property and, and, and I'm having this exchange with them. I'll have to tell you, I'd rather have strangled them than anything else. That's the way I felt in my physical body. Well, that's not a good feeling for a preacher, is it? Well, I'm just telling you the truth because you understand there's something going on inside at the same time. But you know what? At the end of the day, there's a point, a place and time you have to understand that if you're going to make any headway at any point in time, you're going to have to come to terms with that I cannot win this thing on my own. I'm going to have to stand in the victory that is found in Jesus. Right? I'm going to have to understand the reality that the Scripture says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, so let that one simmer for a second. So if you've ever seen a kid at a baseball little, get little league game, or you watch some kids at a basketball uh, game in school, maybe it's the first time they've ever been on the floor and it's a big game, and they do the dumbest thing ever and they blow the game. Maybe it's a game that's at the end of the season. Maybe it's a game that that really, really counts. And they haven't been on the floor, but maybe now there's an injury, right? So they pull the kid out that's been on the bench all season. And he makes the dumbest play ever. And as a result, as a result, the whole team loses, right? The whole team loses. You ever see one of those kids leave the gymnasium? Ever see that? You ever watch one of those kids on a little league team that have had that kind of thing happen? Where as a direct result of whatever they did, threw the thing for everybody, right? It happens, it happens on the football field. It happens in every arena that there is. At there's some point, you see some wilted kid walk away from there, probably, probably, without the right support, never to play again. Amen? Amen? Maybe you're one of those kids. Maybe it was you that did that play and, did it and went away and you, and you never touched it again because you shrank back because of that. Listen, in the spiritual world as a disciple of Jesus and you're in this game and you're pursuing, you know what happens to us? Somehow we think that we became a prize player in the spiritual arena. And then when we look into other people's lives, we assume that we've got it way better than we're way better at the game than they are, whatever else, and we look down on them. Until the day that you make the dumb play. Until the day that you have to stand on the reality of what the Scripture teaches. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? In other words, you're not getting benched for the rest of your life. In other words, you know, the play existed? Absolutely. You know what the craziest thing is about teams? Good coaches, because I've seen them. And I'm not a sports guy, but I've seen some good coaches. There's some really terrible coaches. There's some really good coaches. Some good coaches, well, you know what they do? They watch the films. They watch the films, and they can say, You know what, I've seen, here's where the error came in. You hear what I'm telling you? Listen, the the, the biggest error came in is you were sitting on a bench the whole stinking season. There's the biggest error. That should have never happened. At some point, you should have been on the field so you could exercise those legs under the pressure of what's going on. And as a result, you'd been more equipped for this than just some training exercises. However, so the coach needs to own that part of it, right? Then the player has to own the part that they did something stupid. And maybe you watch the play, you watch the play again, you watch the play, then you watch the opponent, you watch what they did that was an effective play against you, and you learn from it, right? right? And then what would be hoped is that you'll take that, you'll put that in your bag of tricks for victory for the future. And then you'd press forward. Well, the scripture says, and you hear the Apostle Paul speak, and you hear the, you know, this picture of, I, every time I try to do something good, their evil stands right there with me. And so 
you get this picture, you know, wow, maybe, maybe there's intimidation. Maybe, I don't know what it is that pushed you in the wrong direction and, and, and you fumbled the ball yet again. Yet again. And at some place you have to be able to stand up in your Christian life. You're going to have to receive the reality that the Scripture says if you sin, what? If you confess your sin, He's faithful to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You're going to have to, stand, you're going to, have to own that. You're going to have to own the reality is there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're going to have to own that. And if you don't, if you don't, you're going to be the kid that every time they think about putting that ball in motion is going to be paralyzed. Well, let me tell you what the Scripture teaches is that if anybody this is exercising that kind of mentality, that's not the teachings of the Scriptures. That's something else. That's our own whatever. Well, what if you're putting the ball in motion, you're, you're running great, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job and you have a shortcoming, a setback, so on and so forth. And, you, and, you, and you're wore out. Maybe, maybe you're like that team in that movie Facing the Giants where all their players, there's just enough, they take the field and you don't get a relief player. You hear what I'm saying? This team was just a small little team. They went against the biggest team that there was. And they didn't have any relief players, so they had to stay in there and play the whole time. And so they're running the field the whole time. Maybe you're just burned out. Maybe you fumble the ball out of frustration, out, maybe out of fatigue. Maybe out of fatigue. I've got a scripture for you to consider. It's Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. It says this, You were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. Can you think about that? Think about that. You're running a race who cut in. You know, you know what cuts in on us a lot? Fear. Us shrinking back to the abilities of I'm going to throw the play in the flesh instead of running the one in the spirit. You hear what I'm telling you? Equipped by what God's called us to do, we shrink back into a different dimension. We shrink back from what God's called us to be. We're running this race and we're moving right along and everything's just going right. And you, and you fumbled, you, you tripped on the field. You fell down, got the wind knocked out of you. Every time you go into that arena, you remember that spot on that ball field that you tripped up, right? Or you can understand that everybody trips at times, don't they? You can understand the reality that when you're running the race, there's some things you need to be aware of. Shortcomings. Some of the obstacles that you think of running the race and getting tripped up in the context that we see this scripture that, we're, that I'm speaking on right now, it was the, in the, the spirit of the day was athletes that literally would play the games that they were in completely naked because they didn't want to get tripped up in their clothing. That's the analogy Paul's speaking of. They'd get hung up in their clothing. So forget the clothing issue. And think about the other issues that trip us up when you're running the race. I'm running this race. And my desire is to accomplish the very purposes of God. And I'm going to accomplish those things, and there's some things that I have to put at the forefront. Because everything else that I involve myself in is a whole bunch of something else. It's loving God with every fiber of our being. And it's making disciples, teaching them the same things that we've been taught. That's why we're here. Right? So when you think in terms of, of, of going down the journey, it's like here we are, we're at Families of Faith Church. This is the flagship, you understand? It's the flagship. It's the one that says we're going to be involved in all sorts of different ministries that other people don't want to do. We're going to, we're going to run plays all the time. We're going to try to be as spiritually driven as possible in order that we don't find ourselves on the field trying to pass a ball in the flesh that requires the Spirit to get it done. So as a result... We're out there, and we're running for everything we're worth, and every now and then we end up face down on the ground, face planted into the ground as a direct result of several variables. Some of them are self-inflicted. 
Some, some of them are a direct result of serving faithfully and getting fatigued. And at some point, at some point, you think, you know what, I'm going to run this play on my own this time. I think I got this. And God says, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're going to do it in the spirit or not at all. Or you're going to end up face down on the field with the wind knocked out of you. So when I think in terms of trying to accomplish the things that we're called to do and trying to do it with the, you know, sincere and complete, the fullness of who we are, we're going to get the flesh out of there. Quit making these plays that are directly and completely correlating with my fleshly understanding of life and step back into the spirit. You're running a good race who cut in on you. At some point, it's a good idea to start running in the flesh because I fumbled the ball in the spirit. Maybe the tripping, the shortcoming that I ended up face down on the ground is because God literally tripped me to get my attention. Well, that's a mind, that's a concept we probably didn't think of, huh? That maybe the, the God of all creation, that he could trip us up to get our attention. Right in the middle of the play. He says, oh, listen, you got it all wrong. I'm not interested in this game. I'm, I'm, in, in, in other words, I'm not interested in the battle of the day. I'm interested in winning the war. So if you've got to end up face planted in order that we win the war, you're going to get face planted. You're going to end up face, face planted. Easy for me to say, yeah. The reality of it is it's easier to try to say it than to find yourself in it. And the reality is that I'll be honest with you, I'm not interested in face planting. I'm not going to be face planted. I'm doing an analysis of everything that we do right now. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not throwing any more plays that are in the, in the flesh because I'm going to take on my own understanding and run this play anyway. It's not happening. We have all sorts of directives in Scripture that give us the opportunity to, you know, act like we got some sense, to accomplish things that are far beyond our abilities. <clears throat> but sometimes, through sincere effort, I don't know, through confusion, fatigue, all these different things, we start thinking, you know what, I, I'm going to just do this one and I don't need God to do it. I'm just going to do this because... You know, I'm upset. My feelings are hurt. Uh, I'm wore out. Listen, when I was talking to these young guys last night at the end of the night, and I wanted to strangle the life out of them. You hear what I'm telling you? No, they didn't hear that out of my mouth, but I'm telling you inside of me, something very wrong was going on. So if I'm telling you that, and I'm the preacher, and I'm telling you that into service, some people listen to this online, they'd say, well, I can't believe that preacher said that. Believe it. Because it's real. And at the end of the day, you know what was happening? I was wanting to run a play in the flesh. Instead of, how about this? A kind word turns away wrath. Contentious words stir up anger. How about that play? Because that's a directive right out of the Scriptures. My point is to say, when you analyze these things and you look at it, you say, what am I doing and why? What's the objective? Because you know what Paul says, you know, when I want to do good, what? Evil stands right there with me. Stand right there with me. So I'm going to have to choose to go the right way. And the other option not only is there ready and available. Man, it is warmed up like a car in January. You hear what I'm telling you? Ready to go. It's appealing as that warm car is to. You hear what I'm saying? I had to shift my analogy to warm instead of cold air conditioning because it's cold outside today. But you get the picture, don't you? Do you get it? Is that evil standing right there with us at some time in the midst of whatever our justification of whatever the circumstance is, it sounds good. It sounds justified. I've got good reason to be upset with these young guys on the property while they're speaking foul words. They're disrespectful. How dare they? On church property. Right? 
How dare they on church fire? Are you with me? You hear me? How about this? Jesus outstretched arms on the cross. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You get it? He came to his, that which was his own and his own received him not. But he died for them anyway in order that they might have the opportunity. And here these people come on and there's an outreach event. That's what we call it. There's a carnival out there. We, our desire is they come here. We want to rub shoulders with them, don't we? We want to have an opportunity. We want to be able to say, you know what? We want to show you the love of Jesus. That's our format. That's who we are. We want to show you the love of Jesus in a practical way. By me kicking your rear end right off this property because you've said something I don't like. That's a bad play, folks. You hear what I'm telling you? It's a bad play. I'm confronted with it because I'm looking at it and I'm saying, I'm not going to spin my wheels in the mud. Another revolution. Not one more time. Not one more time. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 and following says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. They do so to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No. I strike a blow to my body and make it a, my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Boy, you're hearing a preacher's heart right now. You hear what I'm telling you? This is it. Not one more spin in the mud. I'm not sparring with the wind. I'm not, I'm not playing around. I mean, to communicate to you, what does it look like for us to accomplish the very purpose that we're here? What does it look like for us to love God with every fiber of our being and to make disciples in a way that motivates them to action. Motivates somebody to say, not only am I going to receive Jesus, you know, as the fire escape from the hell place, right? Because that's how we market it, right? You know, you need, you better, you better ask Jesus to rescue, you know, because you're hellbound. And if you don't receive Jesus, you're going to go to this nasty old place called hell and you're going to burn and rot forever. Well, listen, here's the reality. That's true. But that's not where it ends because it doesn't say make, you know, go ahead and say, you know, here's your get out of hell free card. It's got the name Jesus on it at the gate. You just hand it in and you get your free go to heaven. No. Jesus said, go and make disciples. Teach them the things I taught you. And I'll be with you to the very end of the age. Right? While you're loving God with every fiber of your being. Oh, and by the way, don't point your stinking fingers at everybody as if you've arrived someplace that you haven't arrived because guess what? Here's a revelation. Listen to this. Guess what? When you want to do good, evil's going to be standing right sticking next to you too. Right? And you're going to be faced with the reality that at some point in time, you're going to get face planted to the ground. And it's going to be you looking, asking God, oh God, forgive me. Stand me up. Let me take one more play or you can stay down in the mud forever. But the scriptures don't teach that, do they? Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You better own that. That will be written on your jersey because you're going to need it to be. Because when you get face planted in the ground, you're going to need to come up 
with something more than everybody looking at you and saying, I told you so. Because the church is good at that, isn't it? Church is good at pointing your shortcomings and saying those kinds of things instead of, you know what, let me stand you back up. How about this? Consider how to spur one another on to love and good deeds. How about that one? How about saying there's a mission that we're supposed to accomplish and it's driven by that love right there. It's driven by it. And making a disciple is I better be a disciple before I can make one. I better know what Jesus taught before I can share that, right? But at the end of the day, understand, if you're running along in this journey and you're running it and running it, at some point in time, you're going to think it's a good idea to run a play in the flesh. And you're going to end up stinking face planted straight down on the ground. Right? Have you been there? Yeah? No? Nobody wants to say, I don't say the way you're I said, the preacher's going to look at me. God's already looking at you. Listen, I, I'm, I'm preaching from my heart. I, I don't know what else I could tell you. Looking at everything that we're involved in, it's like, you know what? What I don't want, I don't want the notorious, you know, you know the, what they call catch and release in the church. You know, they bring them through the door. They come down. They kneel in front of the altar. They say a sinner's prayer. And they go right back out the stinking door. And you never see them again. Catch and release. Show me it in Scripture. It doesn't exist. Go and make disciples. Right? That's what it says. And you know how we do that? Legitimately, you know how we do that? First of all, we have to receive grace and mercy that God provided. And that is found at the cross. Jesus made it happen. But receiving it is different than hearing it. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Receiving it means that I'm going to embody it. It means when I get face planted, I'm going to count on God just the same as Jesus when he was tempted in the wilderness and after he battled the, the, the devil and all of his scripture that the devil was using out of context and Jesus hammered him with the, the word in context. You know what it says? That the angels uplifted him. They came and ministered to him. So when I get face planted, I'm going to have to be count on the fact I'm going to get picked up and ministered to. Amen? Because somebody else, listen to what I'm telling you. Somebody else is looking at your life and it depends on who we are, how willing we are to understand. It's because, because while we try to do good, evil stands right there with me. Because of that reality, Jesus died. I didn't hear a single amen. Because of that reality, Jesus died. Because when you try to do good in your flesh, if you try to be saved by living out the law, you know what happens with you there? You fall short because the scripture says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. How many? All. So the reality of it is, is on this journey as you're, you're traveling it, you're going to have to own it. You're going to have to receive it because you're going to need it. Because at some point you're going to be face down on the ground because you ran a play in the flesh. You hear me? And somebody, somebody is watching from the sideline. Somebody needs to see the reality that you didn't have to run the play in the flesh. I fumbled the stinking ball because I did something I was equipped to do. I did the wrong way. So I'm going to have to get up. I'm going to have to receive that. And then to make a disciple, I'm going to have to teach them the things that I've learned. I have to teach them that the strength that I have is not in me. It's found in the one who conquered the grave. It's found in Jesus. And they're going to have to understand it's not about some prayer. You know, I got to, I'm going to give you a track. Here, read this track. You know, accept this, pray, and ask Jesus to forgive you, and then skip out of here and go to lollipop land. No. Receive that forgiveness. Don't go back to the quagmire or the mud or the mess you went that you came from. And let God do a change in your life because he's living in you. And as a result of that, let others be attracted to the forgiveness that you receive face down on the field. Do you hear me? 
So where are you at? You, just, you still think, you, you know, it's funny, we got Drew here and we got his grandson, Dean, and I love it. He has brought a breath of fresh air to a lot of people's lives. Amen? If you know Dean, you'll know what I'm talking about. But he's a funny little guy. He's this big, right? He told me he doesn't need any training for, for baseball. He's playing. He's going to have his first game. He hasn't even had his first game, has he? No. Nope. Got rained out today, right? Am I right? He didn't need any training. He already knows how to play. That's what he told me. That's what he told me. He doesn't need it. He's ready for the, he's going to play pro ball right now. In his head, that's reality. Do you hear what I'm telling you? In his head, that's reality. Let me tell you what, it's not reality. Because reality will come to rest on him when he takes a swing at a ball and he misses in front of a group of kids. And he's going to stand in the same shoes that I'm telling you. He's going to need all the encouragement that comes from people who love him and tell him, next time, you're going to hit it out of the park. Right? Right? Right. So I don't know where you're at. I'm an old timer at this. I've been walking this journey with Jesus for a long time. What? Right? And I still find myself face planted in the mud. And I have to get up and I'm going to have to rely on the reality that I ran that play in the flesh. He didn't call me to run that play. It had nothing to do with me. I'm going to have to say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Who will rescue me from this body? Right? The one that's con condemned. Who will rescue me? What did Paul say? Thank God for Jesus. He's the one who redeems us. If you've never received that forgiveness, if you've never come to a place, I'm going to tell you something. You can hear about Christ. I grew up in a, in a church that we had a reverence for God, but we didn't have a relationship for God. And my whole life in that period of time was hypocrisy. I watched it modeled before me. That's what it was. Do as I say, not as I do. The reality of it is, is without receiving, if I, if I don't receive the forgiveness that comes when I made the play the wrong way, if I don't receive it, then I stand condemned. Why? Because the scripture says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You have to receive it. If, you don't re if you've never received it, you stand condemned. Jesus said, I came so when you fumble the ball in the play, I pick you up and dust you off. And there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So wherever you're at tonight, wherever you find yourself, no matter what circumstance of life, Maybe, maybe you've been running the journey long like I have. And you're saying, preacher, you know, I hear you. I don't want to spin my wheels in the mud anymore. I don't want to swing aimlessly in the wind. I don't want to do it. I, want to, I don't want to swing one more time. In a manner that's a direct result of me doing it in the flesh. If I miss this time, it's not going to be because I wasn't walking in the Spirit. It's going to be because God tripped me up in order that I learned something in the moment. I'm going to thank him for it then. But wherever you're at, maybe you've asked the Lord to save you, and you, you, need, to, you need to maybe come and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to run these plays, and they're going to be driven by you. I'm going to love you with every fiber of my being, and I'm going to. I'm going to make disciples, and I'm going to be one myself. But if you've never asked the Lord Jesus to forgive you, let me just tell you, you can be, as they say, I like you could be 18 inches away from, from heaven. You could be head knowledge and not in your heart. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. It's the heart, with the heart we believe in, we're justified. With the mouth we speak and we are saved. So wherever you find yourself as this music is playing, counselors come forward. And if you've never asked the Lord to rescue you, to save you, then you need to do it. If you have and you're a mess and you've got issues that are going on, you want to pray and get it right, tonight's the night to do it. As the music plays, would you come?
Father God, we thank you for this time and I pray you'd help us on our journey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Would you help us as we go from this place to wear that well? Help us, Lord. We press forward to accomplish your very purpose. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.